hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let where you've been hinder you. Don't let what they've said hinder you. Hinder you. Don't you let your past hinder you. You're a woman. Welcome to Woman Without Limits. I'm so delighted that you could tune in today. You know, we've been bringing you some powerful, amazing programs on different women from all walks of life, having gone through so much and yet they are who they are today because they decided they are actually a woman without limits. And that's who you are. And you need to understand that nobody can limit you but you yourself. I'm your host, Reverend Kat Kuna, and I want you to understand if you've never watched Woman Without Limits, when you start today, you will never stop. And if you haven't watched, you know what you need to do? Go on YouTube. Get our clips there. We have Women Without Limits programs on YouTube that are from them days. Please watch and I know the Lord is going to bless you. Now today we have a guest that's going to absolutely change your life. You know, so many times we see people up there and we have no idea where they're coming from. We don't know what they've had to go through to be where they are. But I came to realize something in my life that if you see a powerful woman, if you see somebody that's been raised up by God, that's doing things that are changing lives, ask them their story because there's always a story behind the glory. Today we have an amazing guest, amazing. She is so beautiful. Oh my God. She's even more beautiful life. Her name is uh, Victoria Rubadiri, and today we are going to be hearing her story. She is a reporter and primetime news anchor on NTV, weekend edition that airs every Friday to Sunday at 9 p.m. A host and producer of the Women and Power segment that airs every Saturday during the primetime bulletin on NTV. She holds a bachelor's degree in broadcast journalism from Temple University in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Now, she has a background of radio and TV, an amazing woman, amazing mother, and today we're going to be hearing where she is coming from to be who she is. I know very many ladies admire her because not only is she beautiful, but she just has such a sweet spirit, a beautiful heart. And today we're going to be hearing where she is coming from. Ladies and gentlemen, would you put your hands together for Victoria Rubani? <laughs> Like you knew the colors we were going to really how did this happen <laughs> <laughs> i mean you match you just look the part oh thank you yeah, so much i'm so yeah. excited to be here thank you thank you for coming you. i know that a lot of people know you they watch you yeah. they but they they need to know the other story of victoria and that's why we want you here yes absolutely eh? amen absolutely, yes. you're ready to remove every mask oh i am <laughs> <laughs> i didn't bring any though <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. So we just want to know, like, who Victoria is. We want to go to really, you know, the background yeah. and get to know who Victoria is and, you know, how you came about. So let's start from the beginning. Who's Victoria? Where were you born? You might, if you want to say your age, you can. Oh, I'm, I'm somewhere between 20 and 30. Okay. <laughs> and, you know, you have to play Somewhere that. in between. Somewhere in between okay. there. Um, I was actually born in Nairobi, Kenya. Okay. Um, to Kwame and Emmy Rubadiri. I know a lot of people wonder, where does that name come from? I know. And they keep going through that guessing game and trying to put my features with this community or that community. Right. Um, my dad is actually from Malawi. Um, and oh. my mom is Kenyan. Now she's from three different communities within Kenya. Uh -huh. So she has some uh, Maasai, Kikuyu, 
and Kalenjin. And so you put all those together and Malawi and you get... It's a mixed grill. You get rubadiri. You get rubadiri, so tell, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me now, in this mixed grill, yes. what can you speak? Can you speak the Kikui, the Maasai, the... I can't speak any of the vernacular languages. Um, and I'll tell you why. My, my mom, when she was coming up, her parents purposely refused to teach them any of the Kikuyu or Kalenjin uh, because they wanted them to just grow up as Kenyans. Okay. So she speaks Swahili, of course, and English, but they wanted them to really appreciate being Kenyan and not really to identify with one or the other okay. since they had such a mix. So um, when we grew up, it was just Swahili, it was just English. So I don't really, I don't have any connection with any of the Any language or any, culture any the or, com yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, my shags, at least the one that I usually go to, is right. in Kajado in Isinia, where my grandmother lives. Mm -hmm. um, of course, the other ones are in Sotik, and the other one is in Gatundu. Right. But we relate more to the one in Isinia. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it, we haven't really had that really deep, deep. I'll just call myself a human being at this rate. <laughs> <laughs> no, at this rate, yeah. At this rate, yeah, I'm telling you. Because there's other mixes in there as well. But yeah, yeah I mean, um, I've really kind of come to love and appreciate Kenya as a whole and not just based on one community. Right. Um, and I think that my experiences in, in me growing up here and partly in the U.S. helped me see that. I have a world view on things. Mm. Um, because I, I grew up here and I loved it. I loved my childhood here in Kenya. Oh, really? It was awesome. Okay, yeah. what part of Kenya did you grow up in? Right in Nairobi. Uh huh. Um, I like to say I grew up on a radio station, literally. Okay, tell us what you mean. Yeah, let, <laughs> let me explain. Because <laughs> um, my parents used to work for Trans World Radio. Okay. And um, my dad was the director there for a couple of years. So we grew up on the, the radio compound because that's where we lived. Yeah. So when I was born, that's all I knew. Oh, um, so you would go like with your dad to work and, and see yeah, him? Yeah, I would see him at work, go into the boardroom and say, hey dad, during lunchtime, it was very chill and very right. easy. Uh -huh. um, I say I had my first voiceover when I was three because um, my parents were always in the studio. So I was very used to that whole media world from yeah. a very young age. Right. Um, and I guess that's probably why I'm in what I'm doing now because of that kind of experience and exposure. So um, just having that experience and then, of course, making the move to the U.S., which was uh, another, another thing Another whole itself. story. Oh, yeah. gosh, it yeah. was. But, okay. but life here was really good. Also, really when, good. when you were three years old, you went and did your voiceover? Yes. Did they tell you maybe you have a, a, a TV voice or, or radio <laughs> voice? Or? Um, actually, because my mom is the one, she was doing a, a promo for one of her programs. And she says, why don't you and say something. It was hilarious because she said I could not say the sentence full. So I'd have to say one word, she would take that. Another word, she would take that. And then put it <laughs> and together. The, oh. yes. <laughs> so it took some time. It wasn't like perfect, you yeah, know. And yeah. she was just like, oh God, this yeah. child. Yeah. But, you know, eventually I was going to grow into, you know, wow. doing this. Did you yeah. like it? Or for you it just was natural? It was the, the thing to do? I, to be honest, it was not natural because I was... Growing up here, I was a very outgoing child. I was very friendly, but, and I'll explain, moving to the U.S. because it's a different culture, um, is where I really, my self-esteem took a hit. And my personality just went down. Um, you're coming into um, an inner city kind of environment from a very cozy Nairobi family and mm. friends. And it wasn't the most welcoming environment. Mm -hmm. And I remember my first school experience was in a public school and the kids didn't understand who's this African kid, you know. And, and your English maybe wasn't even clear It to wasn't them. clear to them. Yeah. I couldn't understand them, they couldn't understand Yeah, because I know in yeah. America, if you try to say, give me water, they have no idea what you're talking about. Water, <laughs> yeah, exactly. what, what are you talking, water, what's that? They don't know until you say water. You're yeah. Water, yes. Yeah, and like, like oh, well, that's what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So there was like that kind of uh, accent barrier, if you will. And for a child, because how, how old were you then when I you went to 10. the States? I was 10, yeah. You were a little 10? Yeah, yeah. For real? Yeah, I was really Did young. your parents relocate? Yes, they did. Okay. That's the thing. So we all moved and started life afresh there. Right. You know, and so I'm trying to understand this new life. I was excited, 
but I didn't know what to expect. Okay. And um, so that kind of reception of kids making fun of you and you're trying to assimilate and get into this new culture, and it wasn't working. Because mm. of course they wouldn't accept who I was. Mm. And for me, I couldn't grasp that whole idea. I wanted to be accepted. I because in to be Kenya, validated. you had it all. Yes. Everybody loved you. Yeah. You had family and friends. Yeah, exactly. Everybody understood your English. Yeah, exactly. So what's this big deal? <laughs> what's the big deal? <laughs> what yeah. English are you speaking? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah. right. Yeah. So, so getting through that process was very tough. And you're in the preteen stage, you know, where you want to make friends. You want people to kind of accept to you fit and, and fit in. And it wasn't happening. Mm. So it was very frustrating. And, um, you know, coming up during that period of time, I literally decided to shut down. I said, okay, if they're not going to accept me or um, who I am. And I just didn't like who I was. I said, let me just turn into a quiet person. And I went into a shell, literally. No, Victoria, are you serious? Yes. Like you changed you? You entered into a cocoon? I literally, yes. What are you talking about? So I, I just didn't talk to anyone, would go to school and um, do my work, come back home, cry my eyes out because I was teased throughout the day and church wasn't any easier because you'd meet the same people kind of terrorizing you and, and making you feel like you're less than. They would tease the way you dress. Oh, you're not wearing name brand clothes. That was a thing. Yes, brand. But even, name even, brands. even now, yeah. in oh, the yeah. States, you better have a brand. <laughs> you, uh, what's you know? that? You know, yeah, they, they, they won't just know like your, your jacket. Uh, who's that? Who's that? You, who, who are you, who are you wearing? wearing? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can't really get into there that you kind not of say world. Come out. Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, that one, yeah. Who's that? Who is that? Yeah. So uh -huh. I had to come to terms with that. And as a young person, how do you do that? My parents did help, you know, they kind of pray me through. But for you as a kid, you want your friends. Right. You want people of your age to understand. Not your parents. Not really your parents. They can't, they can't really get it. And yeah. then for you, the parents are really old school. They're very old. <laughs> you know? Right. They, they don't understand now what it is that you're going through. Right. So um, as, a, as a result of that, I went through high school. And I still had that kind of personality trait. And the problem was, because I was seeking validation, everywhere I would go, it was just, just accept me, just take me in. And I would bend and, and try and turn to what people wanted me to do, which was a danger. Oh. Which was a danger, oh. yeah. Do you, do you know, uh, uh, Victoria, you're yeah. really ministering to somebody right now? Mm. Because a lot of girls are in that quagmire. Yeah. Yeah. They want to yeah. fit in. So they want to do what others expect of them. Exactly. So if you want us to drink, let's go. Yes. You want us to sleep around, let's go. Right, you want us right, to do, right, and a right. lot of girls are in that predicament right now, yes. based on yes. perhaps where they're coming from or right. things that were done to them. Right, right. So that's powerful. Yeah, yeah. Oh my God. So you forgot about yourself and entered yeah. into a cocoon of somebody different. Someone completely different. And now I allowed people to speak over me and I allowed people to define me. And so when you have that and you don't know who you are, you can only imagine what you can get into as a young person. Um, so it, it was a, a tough period for me. Um, and then, you know, guys start coming into your space and ask you out. And of course, well, no one else is talking to me or accepting me. So you take to that. I might as well. I might as well. Right. So you get into the wrong relationships, which is what I did in high school. And, um, you know, this led into, after I graduated, I was dating a guy who had no business dating. We've had those relationships before. Right. <laughs> and you get into university. And this is funny because this university is where I wanted to go for the longest time. Mm. I knew I wanted to get into journalism. I admired people like Christian Amanpour, Bernard Shaw on CNN. And I said, this is what I want to do. Um, but I never really had the personality. But I decided, you know what? I'll follow through with it. So I applied, and it was the only school I applied to. I applied, and I got in. And um, so this should have been my time to say, let go of everything else yes. and focus. All these guys just stay away. Right. right. This is your, your dream school to do your dream career. Don't let anything try and circumvent or try and sidetrack you from what you want to do. Right. You stay in the relationship. I stayed in the relationship with this guy. and I, Did your parents know about the relationship? Um, no, they didn't. They didn't, and they didn't know how serious it was. They thought he was just a friend. Just a and young, that's how I young painted people it. just, yeah. Yeah, you know, we're, we're good at, at putting up this image of, no, no, I'm the innocent girl that you 
you waste. know I am. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Don't even go thinking other right. things. I'm very And there's innocent. other things going on. <laughs> right. So you're good at lying to yourself and other people as well. So um, my my story had unraveled when I got pregnant. In my freshman year, I got pregnant um, in my in my second semester of my freshman year, and it's like all of a sudden reality hits, and you realize, oh gosh, what have I done? And it, it just begins to dawn on me and um, all of a sudden common sense hits and I break this thing off with a guy. Of course, my parents are livid. They cannot even believe our they, little how? beautiful girl exactly. who just is so innocent how right. and, they, and they think the man, is, he must have definitely raped you. <laughs> or something. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> He's yeah. the bad one. You know, he's, parents, he's we have this thing who, of yes. believing this. My child is the best. The company is very bad. <laughs> the, you know? Right. Yeah. So, you know, oh. I, I had to now kind of come to terms with what was going on. Mm. And I've always been honest about this part of my life. Right. I, I, I had to start thinking about options. What do I do? I'm still young. I can't take care because of Because you were a teenager. Child. Yeah, I was uh, 18. I had just turned 18. Whoa. So, Whoa. you know, you're a freshman and I'm just beginning in school. So this is literally the point where it's cutting off everything, your opportunities, school, if that is. If my parents didn't take me in, where else could I have gone? I mean, at what, 18? What job could I get at 18? You nothing. I mean, you're yeah. done. You're done. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, uh, this is now all these things start kind of hitting at me and I'm wondering, what do I do? Mm. And it was a very tough time and I remember... Um, of course, they were upset. My parents kind of um, talked me through and they said, what's going on? What happened? You know, we had raised you through. And it's true, they did. I, I grew up in a Christian home. And I think, like I said, that experience when we first came to the U.S. Right. is what began that whole process of this girl who was searching for acceptance and validation right. that quickly pushed me into that kind of lifestyle because anything went and so once they saw that track and they were like, wow, okay, we had no idea that this is how much it impacted you. Hmm. They began to pray me through that whole time and um, just build me up and encourage me. Because you grew up in a Christian family, yes. so you, you would pray together and, and yeah, all that. Yeah, Your yeah. parents were real Christians. They, so they were. were yeah. Very Did you have other ministry. siblings? I had a younger sister. Uh -huh. So we grew up in, in, in that kind of environment right. where it was was very positive went to church my parents were in ministry you knew right from wrong um, but at a point I decided to pick my own route and go my way and especially because of yeah. the peer pressure, peer pressure the, the exactly. not being accepted so right. you decided you know what these yeah. guys are gonna accept me by force exactly yes you put it on them yes they're going to take me <laughs> I'm nice right I'm a nice person yeah, yeah be my friend right so um, so they took me through and and I had to go through a real kind of healing process because mm. I had to deal with those pains from the past. Did it you tell this man before you ended it up with him? I did, did you tell him you're pregnant? I did. And, I did. Uh -huh. And he, most young guys, of course, freaking out. Like, they oh, run. Oh, my they're, gosh. Who you made know? you pregnant? <laughs> As if, <laughs> <laughs> this? They even say, yeah. it's not mine. Most so of them got, even, yeah. I think he, he freaked out and he got really afraid mm. and, and wondering, I'm young too, like yeah. what do I do as well? So he went quiet for a bit. And um, so I didn't talk to him for, for the months at least that I was pregnant and I just started focusing on me and my emotional well-being because I said, if, I'm, if I made the decision to take this child on, which was very tough, then I need to start working on me before they come. Yeah. So focus mode came in immediately. And I would go home and my parents would take me through, we'd go through Bible study and I'd kind of go back into going to church and doing my own kind of devotions. And slowly through that process, I started coming back to God. Amen. I started relearning Amen. who he was. So, so like what you're saying is that the process made you find God. It, it, it made you f retrace your steps back. It did. It did. Uh -huh. it, it helped me identify what the problem was because you're trying to think like oh, confused teenager. Where did it start? And once I identified what the problem was, which is the issue of validation, I was able to deal with it and realize that it could come up even later on because sometimes you feel like, oh, it's because I was in high school and I wanted validation. No, you can want validation even now. 
you know, and land yourself into other problems. So I had to deal with that problem first mm. before dealing with the issue of pregnancy and, and everything else that came with it. So once I did and identified and I dealt with it, um, I began to feel, you know, sometimes you can feel that you're changing and you're growing. I began to feel the change. Wow. And um, all of a sudden, uh, people were like, There's something different. About and even you. after I had wow. my daughter, yeah. it's interesting because people said, you know, I know you went through something, but you don't look like it. Wow. It's kind of like the three Hebrew boys, when, when they went through the fire and they came out, there was no... No mark There at was all? nothing. No burn? Right. No smell? No smell. The and that's the interesting thing, because when God takes you through and you allow him to kind of clean you up and take you through, the whole residue of what you've gone through doesn't come up. doesn't wow, show up. Wow, man. Wow. So, this will preach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This will preach, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So like God cleaned you up completely. Yeah, and, and what I mean by that is um, most single moms, especially a young single mom, have this, this shame. You're talking to the choir. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you carry this shame and everywhere you go, even if you're not with a kid, it's on your face. And the thing is, I used to see this with a lot of other girls in my church who had gone through the same experience. They carried this thing, this weight of oh, bad me, look what I did, Yeah. you know, and, yeah. and everyone is kind of pointing fingers. But what other people notice is, Vicky, you're not doing, you're not carrying that. What, what, what's different? What is it? Why are you not carrying yourself like all these other single moms? Why are, are you not ashamed, bent over? Why are you not feeling sorry? Why are you not feeling sorry? Exactly. Yeah. Why aren't you, you crying? Yeah, exactly. How, how can you talk confidently? How can you come into church and relate with people as if nothing had happened? And you know, it's not because I had a mask, it's because I had dealt with it. I was not doing wow. with, with the pain, kind of, you know, sometimes people smile, but you're still crying on the inside and it's still a problem. I had truly dealt with it so I could interact with people on a real level because I said, hey, I came through it and I'm wait okay. Wait a minute, wait a minute, no, you must repeat that. Somebody's <laughs> watching, you better listen to this. She didn't put on a mask, yeah. she actually got healed. Yes. You better say that one more time. No, no, it's, and it's extremely important. I actually, roll, it rolled off of me. I surrendered it to him because God said, okay, if you're going to go through this now, and if you really are truly going to be healed, you have to give it to me. And I'm the kind of person who holds on to issues and problems and I'll beat myself up the worst. And not saying I didn't go through condemnation and issues and, and things like that. I did, but because I prayed through it and my parents did help, it was a process that was a lot easier. I remember, and I, let me backtrack a bit, I was walking through campus with my big belly because you were still on campus. Because I was still on campus. Because you went to school throughout. I was throughout. still in school, yeah. I was still in school. I went to school up until the day of my delivery. I was still in school. So um, I remember walking through campus and I remember girls would give me this look. Of mother. Of, <laughs> why couldn't you just get rid of it? Right? You can do that, right? Why are you, why are you taking yourself through this? You know? And I remember that I, I would walk and I would see them and it never affected me. It is, it's the weirdest thing. It never affected me. They would look at me and it's almost like it just, I had a force field around me. Things would come and just poof, bounce off. What? They wouldn't affect me. <laughs> yeah. Because I had gone through that where I'd made up my mind and say no. And this is the girl who was seeking validation. This is the girl who wanted, who wanted to fit to, in. Who wanted to fit in. Under whatever circumstances. And how can you fit in with a big belly? Yeah. You know, this is, that's <laughs> the, the biggest, that's the most kind of biggest manifestation of yeah. what you did. Yeah. People are like, <laughs> You know, you how can't can you get hide away? It. You can't hide it. You can't get away from that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So I, I was going through that, but still it was not really affecting me. Hmm. You know, and, and that's how I knew I could feel that change. That's how I knew I had been healed from this thing. Right. But it didn't stop there. Because Wow, man, you're <laughs> preaching to me. <laughs> You know, because yeah. people normally when they go through a situation, and especially women, yes. it, it becomes a stigma in their lives. It and does, they yeah. never move. They don't. 20 exactly. years later, somebody yeah. is still talking about, I was left. Yes. 20 <laughs> yeah. The child grew up, finished school for crying out loud. Yes. The child is about to get married. Right. <laughs> the child could get another child. Right. And here you are still saying he left. Yes. Can you please yeah. wake up and smell the coffee and take a <laughs> sip of reality? You know, so I it's love true. this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Ooh, 
So I had to move away from living in that condemnation moment. You know, I've, I met a lot of people, and that's what you notice, a lot of people are still in that moment. Like you said, 20 years ago it happened, but you're still in that moment. The moment has defined your whole life right. after that. Right, right. So it was not easy as a young person to make those kind of decisions. It wasn't because yeah, that, you, it must be God. It, it is. Yeah. It, it was all him, you know, and so accepting that, it took me now through a process of helping other young girls. Um, wow. Because, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Isn't it amazing it is, that yeah. out of your trouble, yeah. you help others right. out right. of theirs? Right. So everything that you go through, God will always use it for good. He always the Bible says yeah. all things work together for good yeah. for those who love God exactly. and those who are called according to his purpose. Yeah. So at the yeah. end of the day, yeah. no matter how bad it looks, no matter what you've gone through, yeah. no matter how evil it looks to you, yeah. God yeah. is going to turn it around and use it for good. Exactly. So you started exactly. helping young girls now. I started helping young girls because I, I knew the pain of what it was to go through that. I knew the pain of what it was to be the girl in church and to have parents in ministry and to bring that kind of shame um, to your parents and to yourself. And I was like, you know what? I know what it's like, and I, I don't want another girl to, to go through that. So if I can be that kind of preventative person to kind of wow. lead them through, I'll do that. So I started doing um, mentorship um, with high school girls. I started doing Sunday school. So every Sunday would go, and all of a sudden, when I was open about my experience, the girls opened up. And things that I had no clue and their parents had no clue that they're going through came Isn't out. Isn't it? You know, my daughters now, they're, 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 they're older. The, yeah. the, my first daughter is 25 and the second one is 19. You know what they tell me? They tell me, you know, parents have no idea yeah. what their children are yeah. going through. They yeah. think they do. Yeah. They have no clue. They don't know. Because yeah. the child is sitting there with you. You're even praying together. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You're praying. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what can be better? Right. But at the end of the day, if you don't really dig up to find out what that child is going through, you'll be yeah. surprised. Very they true. tell you things of masturbation yeah, and, and, things, and, yeah. and, 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 and boyfriends that uh, parents don't know yes, about and, yes, and habits yes, and, and yes. pornography yeah, and yeah. Yeah, all of it is going yeah. on in the house. Exactly. But nobody and knows. No one knows. No one knows right. apart from that child. Right. Yeah. So they're going through these struggles by themselves. And the thing is the enemy makes you feel like you're the only one going through this. So as a result, you won't feel the need to talk to anyone. Well, why? Because someone's going to judge me if I do. But I had to create an environment where, one, I had to be honest, and they now would be open to bring in their issues and feel safe about what it is that they were wow. saying. So when they had that environment, then they were able to deal with it. Then they were able to kind of see the love of God and accept it properly. Oh, man. You know? Yeah. Um, and, and that's the process that I went through, is understanding that he had loved me that whole time when I was going through wow. the teasing in school that and going Jesus through high school. Loved you, yeah. He loved me the whole time, but I, it's not that I didn't know, I hadn't accepted it. Right. And, and, and you see a lot of young girls who they haven't accepted because you're looking for every other kind of view of love or any other definition of love apart from the real one. Hmm. And he's always been saying it, I love you, I love you, I love you but you just have never heard or accepted. And so finally when they heard and they're like, wow, so this Christian thing, right? this is what it's, this is real Christian living now. Right. Right? right. You do have struggles, but there's a God who loves you and says, it's okay. In spite. It's, I love you. I always have. Even if, yes. no matter. Exactly. It doesn't exactly. matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And if you keep feeling like, oh, even with my struggles with pornography, if these girls have this, or a struggle yeah. with sex, or yeah. a struggle, he'll, you mean he still can take me back? He loves you. You mean he still can look at me with eyes of love and acceptance? Yes. And, and so now that being communicated to them, all of a sudden I started to see a change, and they started getting into ministry, and they started getting to the dance ministry and talking to their friends and bringing friends to Bible study, because it now meant something. It wasn't because mommy and dad told me to. It's because I have a relationship. With God. With God. And so oh. when they saw Vicky's relationship with God is real, then I can have one too. 
And just showing that and being real, they, they started to appreciate. And it was awesome because I understood what my, my time and my, my rough points were for. It was not for me to cry my eyes out and just kind of go through it alone. Um, it was to be a light and be an encouragement to someone else and say, you can get through it too. Ooh. Oh my God, you're preaching to me. I'm telling you, this is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> you are preaching. Yeah. Because that's what women, that's, that's what we tell daughters of Zion. That's what mm -hmm. uh, Woman Without Limits is all about. Mm -hmm. To know that what you go through, you're not alone. Yes. And that God cares. Right. And he loves you even in that situation. Exactly. And he wants to get you out of it. Right. And also your mess becomes right. a message exactly. to somebody to else. To someone else. Uh -huh. Exactly, exactly. Oh God. So you've been training them and, and letting them know yeah. they are not alone and God loves them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that started, of course, uh, in the U.S. Right. And, and when I came back, um, of course, it was coming back home and getting back into the whole swing of things and getting back into a new culture that I hadn't really related to in 10 years. Because now, basically, your life now was uh, yes. American, even your English, even now the way now, you speak. Now, the way I speak. Yeah. And people here are like, what are you saying? You know? <laughs> so it was, it's a reverse it's of a re what happened. You know, so after I had spent 14 years there, but there was 10 years, a 10 year block that I hadn't visited home. So that's why I'm saying I'd never related with Kenya in a good 10 years. Right. So I come back and I'm with my daughter and I'm trying to find work. Um, and I knew the real meaning of tarmacking. Yeah. Taking my CV everywhere and, and talking. Okay, meanwhile, the work yes, is, yes. is uh, broadcasting. It's broadcasting work now. That's what yes. you're looking for now. That's what I'm looking for, a uh -huh. job in, in radio, TV, in print, wherever. Yeah. Wherever. Right. Because I was desperate to find work. Um, so I came back home and looking for work, and it was tough. You know, you really... Uh, just, sorry, just to yes. cut you short a little. Did you come back with your parents? We came back so with the family. So you all came back? We all came back. Ah. We all came back. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we moved back, and uh, so looking for work and trying to figure out what to do. And went to every single TV station with my CV and said, hey, I'm, I'm here. looking for a job. I'm back, guys. <laughs> I'm back, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's funny because yeah. you're thinking like, Okay, I've come back with my experience and I have my degree and you think people open up and be like, hey, And yes. say, what? We've actually been waiting for degrees. I know, right? Yeah. And they're like, um, who are you again? Yeah. You know, and so you have to go through that process of no one knows who you are, yeah. let alone care. Mm. And yeah. um, so um, I said, okay, fine, wow. This is now reality. Yeah. And I had to kind of uh, take a back seat and say, okay, let me regroup. And I remember I was doing um, a Sunday school at one of the churches that we were ministering at. And the Sunday school teacher who was with me, she said, have you found a job yet? Because she knew I was doing the job search. I said, no, I haven't, looked, I haven't found a job yet. I've been looking, looking, looking. And she said, okay, I used to work at uh, Capital FM. And I have some contacts there. Would you be interested? I said, even if they give me a job sweeping the floors, I don't care. I like just want to be rate, in there. I want to be in, yeah. you know? <laughs> so uh, she said, okay, I'll connect you. And she connected me with someone and uh, I got in, I did a voice test, had an interview and they said, okay, we like your voice. Would you like to come in? Um, we have an opening in the newsroom as a reporter. I said, I'll take it. Wow. And, and that's now how it started. I started right. off as a reporter in radio. And so the journey began and, and I started to grow in my career and eventually made it on air for, for radio and reading the news and mm. people started to hear the voice and say, who is this? Mm. Never heard this person before. And all those stations that had initially said, who are you again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, they said, how are you? Hey, exactly. <laughs> said, how are you? <laughs> and, and I kid you not, one by one, they started to call me and said, would you like to join us? And I, I said, no. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? I said, no, actually, I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet. And I turned them down. And uh, I remember the last one was NTV who called me. It was just before elections. And they said, we're looking for an anchor. Would you be willing to cross over and just try it out? And I said, you know what? Why not? Let me do this. And I joined NTV, and, and the rest is history. And here I am. Wow. You know, so wow. it's... Wow. Wow. Yeah. Mm. It's, been, it's been quite a process and right. it's been very interesting because I've learned a lot about myself. You know, I keep kind of 
sometimes reverting back to that shy girl who didn't know who she was at times. Right. Not believing that this is where I am, this is what I'm, I'm able to do. But um, God has to constantly remind me of, remember why you're here. Wow. You know, um, sometimes you can get caught up. And comfortable. Yes. Because of the job and the attention. The demands. And yeah. the demands, right? And, and forget that he's given it to you for a reason. And hey, <laughs> hey, so, um, and I went through many tests, you know, I always get the question from a lot of young girls of how, how do you manage this? Because a lot of them get in and they go through the pressures of, you know, bosses ask you to do all manner of things to get to a certain position and the pressures are there. Mm. But one thing I always say is you have to understand who gave you the job in the first place. Wow. And so regardless of what happens, because yeah. people feel like, oh, if I say no, I could lose my job. If I, if I don't give in to the demands and the pressure, I may not have this. And I always tell them, find out what happens after the no. Hmm. When you say no, he may get upset or they may be like, oh, you know, but they, they, you gain respect. Come on, give me so, five. <laughs> Oh my God! Yes, you gain respect when when you uphold your 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 beliefs, your values, your values and yeah. your principles. Right. And and you know and that's one thing even where I work now, no one bothers me. They know your reputation before you even get to where you are going. Oh come you on, know? somebody! Oh so, my goodness! Yeah. It's, it's, it's very hmm. important to regardless of of having just the job. Uh, of, uh, of understanding of how you carry yourself through it. It's extremely important and that's how you can survive and not yeah. just survive, thrive. Wow. In this industry yeah. as a believer. Yeah. A lot of young girls wonder, how do you do it? And I'll say it's just by being myself and being unashamed of who I am in Christ and being unashamed about my walk and being willing to be open about my struggles and, and being able to say no to something that you know you're not willing to do. Right. But still rise because it's not me who made me rise. Mm. It's it's the Lord who put me there. Right. For a reason and a purpose. And and slowly I began to understand and see why he has me in this position. It's not to build a name or to build a brand or, or to just to look build a beautiful. Career. Or to look beautiful yeah, yeah. reading Esther, a prompter, Esther, you know. You don't have a crown <laughs> you don't, exactly. so that you can just sit there and be queen. Yes. You, you are brought here to yeah. deliver your people, exactly, you know, yeah. so you're, you're here to yes. deliver these young girls and let them know, honey, exactly. it ain't over until God says it's exactly. over. Exactly. Yes. Wow. So I have so many girls come up to me and, and say, wow, you know, I, I, I really am touched by your story. I was, I am where you were 10 years ago. My daughter is 10 now. And I remember there's a girl who messaged me one time, um, on social media and she was going through a struggle. She also had fallen pregnant and she says, <clears throat> I don't know what to do. Um, but I read your story and I saw that you chose to keep your baby. How did you go through that? What was the process like? So I explained to her my experience and what I had gone through. So uh, she messaged me back a few days later and she says, because of what you shared, I've decided to keep my baby. Wow. And it was... Yeah. Wow, yeah, it, awesome. was, it was really touching because I realized, yeah. um, had I not been honest and said anything about my story, yeah. someone would have said, that's it, yeah. I'm cutting this off, I have to continue with my life. But she said, because someone else had made it, and I've gotten so many people come to me, parents even, saying, I have forgiven my daughter. I, I didn't know, I didn't understand. Right. But I've forgiven her. Wow. Uh, only because I've seen what you had gone through and I had no clue that's probably what she was going through. Mm. Um, and just seeing the grace that your parents gave you, I've managed to give that to my daughter too. Wow. So, wow. you know, I think being honest and, and having this platform, mm. that's essentially what it was for. Right. It was to share that story on a wider scale and to give hope to, to a, some girl. To the girl. hopeless, really. Yeah, to the hopeless. Yeah. And they wouldn't have a chance of hearing the story or seeing you or thinking, oh, I could actually overcome. Oh, and I could actually do great things. 
Yes, you can. I, I you know? it doesn't it doesn't yeah. demean who I am. It doesn't. It I'm still it me. Right. And then I'm still beautiful and fearfully right. and wonderfully made. Right, right. And so your mistake is not you. It it's doesn't define you. you. Exactly. Right. Exactly. And and understanding that. And also, um, for the sake of my daughter as well, she needed to see a mommy who had overcome, not one who was beat down. And, and, and blaming her. And, oh, you, blaming you see her. now, you look, problem. Look, look, look now what you've done. Look where I you am now. You came yeah. to give me trouble. <laughs> you know, and it's not their fault. Yeah. You know, they come into this world innocently. Yeah. They have no idea what they're coming into. Yeah. So it's not fair to put that pressure on them. Right. You know, or for them to come into an environment where it's so tight and so um, negative because you don't like who you are. Uh, can you imagine? And you're putting it on them. On them. Right. Little babies who have no yeah, idea what exactly, you're going through. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I right. had to be positive for her as well. So she could see, okay, you know, mommy is, is doing things. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and she's going she's places. She's okay. She's fine. Yeah. She's fine, you know. So I had to be the encouragement for her, most importantly, because mm. she's she's my world. So. Is she, is she, how is she? She's, she's an awesome kid. Yeah. She's one of those who's like a, she's an old soul. She'll say something and you're wondering, how did she know that? Yeah. You know, she'll... she'll and She's 10 going to 25. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, she knows where she's going and, and she gives me encouraging wow. words and I'm wondering, wow. how in the world? And, and she'll know what to say at the right time. It's wow. almost like God speaks to her and she'll, you know, say something. But she's an amazing kid. Um, such a big heart. Wow. And, and she really kind of also helped me get through those low points because she was so open. And I'll tell you an example. Um, when I when I had her, she was about maybe two, three, and I still was kind of going through that thing of, I'm back in church, but are people gonna look at me a, a different yeah, way? Yeah. You know, you just didn't know how they're going to receive you. This child would run into the church, mm. hug people, mm. you know, so outgoing. And I'm like, she was that kind of arm of love extending that I wasn't ready to do yet. So she opened it up for me. All of a sudden, like that feeling of condemnation. Mm wasn't really there because how could I, this child running all over the place yeah. and saying hi to people, you know. She was very open and, and very outgoing. So that helped me. She actually opened up for, for me and, and the family as well. Right. Because she, what condemnation, what shame. Yeah, you know, what, she was a little what, kid. What, what, I'm what, here, what, guys. What, what, what are you seeing? So it really helped wow. me. Just her being her yeah. helped me. Helped me go and, and get through. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh my God, that is so beautiful. Yeah. 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 So tell me now. So, so uh, you raise up girls, you mentor them and yes, all that. So yeah. you're doing that program even here in Nairobi. You started in the US and now yes. you're, you're doing it here. Yeah. So um, it's basically based on if I'm called in and, and asked to come and speak. Uh, to young girls, so I speak in several venues, be it at a school, at a university, or a church. So it's it's all over. Whenever whenever I'm invited to come and speak, I'm um, inviting um, you very soon. You're going to come oh, and, awesome. and speak to yeah. the women in Daughters of Zion. No, and absolutely. And the, the single ladies, <laughs> the single ladies, the single ladies. And, the, and the young mothers. Yeah. And you're going to tell them all oh, this. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah. 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 So it's been very important for me to, to just share. And it's also a, a release for me. Mm -hmm. Whenever I share my story, it's, it's a release because I feel so much better. Wow. You know, it, I, I gain whenever I give. Wow. So it's, it's something that I can't really explain, but it's right. an amazing feeling. After I'm done sharing and giving, and then you get the feedback from the girls and they come talk to you and yeah. say, wow, you know, I feel so much better. I feel like I have hope now, you know? You, you know, it's there's nothing it. as beautiful as giving. Yeah. When you give hope and life to yeah. somebody else, there's nothing yeah. as beautiful as that. Absolutely. So tell me, uh, your parents, how are they about it, about the whole thing? I mean, they're, I have amazing parents, I have to say. I have amazing parents. They could have just kind of kicked me out. And I've seen a lot of scenarios where the girl was made to do things that she didn't want to, right. you know, to kind of save face. Right. Many of them yeah. take them even through abortion. Like, right. Like, and ain't I, nobody yeah. got time for all this. No, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I remember they told me abortion is not an option. As much as you would want to try and escape save that. Save face. And regardless yeah. of who we are in the church, because you know how people view them as well. Um, they said, you're not doing an abortion. So understand that. And so now I had to kind of, the only option was, yeah. you're going to have this kid. Yes. But we're also going to help you raise this child so you can mm. finish school. Mm. So that's actually what helped. Because if they said, um, sorry, we, we can't do the mm. school thing, go, go find a deal job. With, deal with it. Deal with, yeah. yes, yeah. deal with your problem. 
I don't know where I would be. I definitely wouldn't be here. Because, I mean, at 18, yeah. how do you deal with anything? No, you, you haven't even dealt you? with you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. them, them saying, we'll, we'll take it on so at least you can finish school. Mm. And I think it also spoke volumes to a lot of uh, people in our church who had gone through the same process. Wow. To, to be a bit more accommodating because, you know, it's not easy. Yes, she made a mistake. Yes, she may have brought some shame to the household. Mm -hmm. But um, you need to bring her through because there's something that she can still bring. There's, there's something that she can still, uh, you know, kind of bring out. And she can be a great person. And so my parents said, we'll help you through. Wow. We'll help you through. And that's how I managed to graduate university. And, and now have the job that I do now. Because right. there was such a great help in, in encouraging me through the process. Do you enjoy the job that you do? I do. I love it. You know, yeah. it's something that I always wanted to do in terms of, I always wanted to tell stories. And not just any, I wanted to be able to make a difference, you know, in, in people's lives and, and be able to give a voice to the people who don't have a voice. Right. So me understanding that the job is not about glamour and makeup and coming to studio and yeah. having all the lights and the way you're glamorous <laughs> <laughs> i wouldn't like to figure myself that way you know you know I, I love the job in terms of being a journalist and and going out there and telling stories you know um the other end of it of anchoring it's great but sometimes it gets a bit boring <laughs> you know it does it yeah. does when you go out in the field and and you meet people and you feel them you hear them and you interact to them that's what makes the job. Okay. That's what makes it fulfilling. Yeah. Yeah. So but just reading and reading, all the... No, I mean, anyone can do that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's not, there's nothing really special about it. I think right. going out telling stories, that's a fulfilling part. So do you job. always find an opportunity to tell people who you are and where you're coming from? Yeah, you mean in terms of... If uh, you meet new people, like if you go out there to work yeah, yeah, and you meet yeah. new people, do you yeah. find an opportunity to just like open up and just tell them, hey... Yeah, and talk to them. I mean, sometimes that is the case. Um, and, and just being honest with people, a lot, especially when it's something to do with young people. Right. And um, you go in and they'll ask you, so how do you do this? How did you get into this, this field? And, and how, did you be, how did you manage to build your skills and get to this point? It's, you know, you sit them down and take them through the process and, you know, what it was like and how you got to this point. So, yeah, I managed to at least share sometimes when I'm out there talking to people so it's it's rewarding also in that sense wow yeah. wow that's yeah. beautiful so do you have a boyfriend no <laughs> i knew that was coming <laughs> you could see it I, eh? could, I could see it um no i don't i don't i'm i'm single yes you don't <laughs> all all oh. of you oh gosh <laughs> yeah i i i've just i've been content with with who I am and being single. You know, I find a lot of people who are single, it's kind of like, I'm single. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you have this thing like, of, um, yeah, oh, why me, help. you know? <laughs> you know, and you feel like you're just so condemned, you're yeah. the worst person ever, and, and I'm like, no, I'm fine. Yeah. You know, I'm single and I'm enjoying it. I love it, you know? Um, just kind of learning me, being able to do my, my job and being a great mom. And when the time comes, I'll be ready. You know? What kind of husband would you want Boy. at the end of the day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't who are you praying for? Who am I praying yeah, for? Like what kind? Yeah. Definitely someone who who loves God. And I'm saying like, oh, yeah, I love God. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of guys who say that. And yeah. you're like, mm, you can yeah. really tell that they really are trying to do something else. But someone who, like, like David, in the sense that he, his heart was after God. It's someone who you don't have to question. You interact with them and you know. They love the Lord. You They're know, sold out. This is someone who, who, who's sold out to, to God and his, his will and, and what he wants to do through his life. Um, and, and that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not about someone who he has to be driving this and he has to be making this kind of money. And wow. he needs to be Somebody doing needs that. To, oh, my God. No. <laughs> Somebody needs to hear that. Yeah. Hey, come on. You know what? You know, you know yeah. that is so sober. Because a it lot is, of girls, yeah. when you ask, he's got to have a car, he's got to have a oh, house, boy, yeah. he's got to, blah, blah, he's going to look this, he's going to. Yeah, can yeah. you imagine? You go for the, for the, for the, um, uh, minute, because that's really. It's really the, minute. It's, it's really the, minute. It's the smallest part, because you yeah. have to interact with this individual for the rest of your life. 
do you have plans of what you're going to do together? What's your vision? Exactly, what, what is your where vision? Where are you going? Mm. Uh, and I have that feeling of when we do get together, it's to do even greater things. Mm -hmm. You know, wow. it's not just to have someone to call your husband or your missus, because that's not what I'm in, in it for, because I just might as well be miss, because I'm fine. But when you come together with someone, <laughs> <laughs> I find people do that because they feel they have to be completed by it. Yes, like a ring completes No, it's yeah, not. It's it does not because I'm perfectly yeah. fine as myself. But when you come together, it's to do something even greater. Yeah, it's for purpose. It's for purpose. Yeah. It's for purpose. Wow. It, to, to be able to do something to change, to mm. impact, mm. to be a world changer. Mm -hmm. You know, and if you're not seeing it that way, if you're not coming together with someone for that, you just do what you've been doing. <laughs> for another couple of years. Continue. You know? Yes, yeah. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, would you please just maybe look at the camera and speak to a girl mm -hmm. and, and let her know how to just rise up from whatever she's going through and know that she was created for a purpose. Okay. Yeah. So this is a message to a young girl who probably was like me a good 10, 15 years ago. Um, you're unsure of yourself. You don't know uh, where you're going. You don't know who you are. But I can tell you for a fact, there is a God who knows who you are. And the most important thing you can do is to begin to develop a relationship with him because there's no one else who can speak into you or speak about you apart from him. And I'll give you an example. Uh, the time when I got pregnant, um, it was one of the lowest points. And I remember sitting on my dorm bed and I was trying to figure out what to do. And I remember the, these words came to me. The Lord said, I will take care of you. But beyond that, he said, I want you to think what I think of you. I want you to say what I say about you. And I want you to do what I tell you to do. And all of a sudden, it started to make sense. My whole life up until that point, I was doing what I wanted to do. I allowed people to speak into my life. Um, and the whole time he was saying something about me and I wasn't listening. And so to you, my advice to you is stop, sit down, listen, because he's been saying something and he's been saying beautiful and wonderful things about you. So one, think what he thinks about you say what he says about you and then do what he tells you to do and you'll be just fine wow wow, thank you. Thank you. wow. Thank you. <laughs> now you want to make us cry i know now sorry you know, oh oh my god but oh, that yeah. is so beautiful that is so awesome thank you Whew, this is woman without limits you're blessed Jesus cares about you. He loves you just the way you are. And it doesn't matter where you're coming from or what you've done. He loves you. He cares about you. Have a wonderful week.